Now that we know how to create an object, it would be nice to be able to do something useful with it. So one of the most important things about objects in, in general is that they are storage areas for local variables or the Ruby name for this is an instance variable. In other words, each object uh, has a copy of that variable. And so we need to be able to set those up, initialize those, um, be able to view them and, and use them. So we're going to do that in a new class here. I'll just call it constructable because we're going to look at the constructor in this method. Uh, so let's write this as constructor overwrite that. And so now we are going to do this. So let's create a method. I'll call it report here because it's just going to display the contents of our variable. And so we want to do something like put s. And we need access to our instance variable. So each version of our constructible is going to have a copy of that. So we might think of doing something like that. But the way to indicate to Ruby that you have an instance variable rather than a regular variable or method or something like that is to put the at sign in front of it. And that tells Ruby to look at an instance variable instead of something else. And this is great, but we need some way to initialize that variable or to construct it, hence the name of this class. And every programming language does this differently. And Ruby is no different in its need to be different and we, it does that with the method called initialize. And we will take one parameter, we'll call it value, and initialize is called when we first create an object. And it's passed a value in, and we're just going to set our variable equal to that value. So now we remember what value we were initialized with and we store that and we can print that out later. And in order to see how that looks, let's create a variable constructable .name, and let's put in something there. And that will create an object. It will pass this something value to this initialize and we will keep track of that in our instance variable called that variable. And if we want to see that, we can do something like c.report. So let's go ahead and make that executable. And we can now run that. And we see something. And just to demonstrate that this is a an instance variable, I'm going to create another variable. And I'm going to put something completely different in there. I'm going to put in a number rather than a string and I'm going to report D and then I'm going to re-report C to, to show that they didn't change between instantiations. So we should see the value of C, the value of D, and then we should see the value of C again. And when we run that, we see the value of C is something. We see the value of D is 42, which is what we passed it, and we see the value of C remains something because each object, C and D, have their own copies of this variable, and so they're not interacting with each other. C and D aren't, but we, we use our same code to initialize them properly.